Okay, remember this conversion. A comes over here, so a to the y equals x. We're going to need to know this for to do to these solutions. There are a couple of more things that have to be expressed. I should have done it with the last section, but I'll do here. If m equals n, then log base a of m equals the log base a of n. George, if I have two, two numbers and they're equal, I can take them to, to any log I want to. They're going to still going to be equal. Likewise, if I have logs of numbers and they're the same bases, the only way that can be equal is if the arguments are equal. This is going to help us to solve either get rid of x's as our exponents or put them in the exponents to make it easier for us. Let's look at this. Log base 2 of 1 minus 2x equals 3. Solve for x. Do you need this one? You need that? Solve this one. You're stuck? I'll give you a clue. So if, if you can't do anything with the log part, change it to the next point. Take the two, bring it over here. And the log drops off. I have one minus two X. What is two cubed? Eight. To solve for X, subtract one. Change the signs. So we have negative seven equals two X and divide by two. So X is equal to negative seven over two. Basically what this section is gonna do is make us use all the properties that we just discussed whenever we need to. All right, let's look at example one. Solve two log base five of X equals log base five of nine. And this is a coefficient. So we have log base five of X squared equals log base five of nine. Since the logs are the same, the only way it could be true is if that's true. To get the X by itself, I square root both sides. So X is equal to plus or minus three. Is that our answer? Did you check your answer? Okay, you guys are staring at it. If the logs are the same, 
only way they can be true is if the arguments are the same. So now let's try x equals positive 3, x equals negative 3. We're back in the original equation. So So the two goes up on top of the three. So it's log base five of three squared. Since the logs are the same. So we know this works. Because everything along the way is true. We know this one doesn't work because we cannot take a log of a negative number. That's why it's important to check your answers here. This is an example two. log base five of x plus six plus log base five of x plus two equals one. Mm -hmm. What property can we utilize here first? We have a plus of two logs which means they multiply. Now we can take this base five. So we have X plus six, X plus two equals five to the first. Foil this out, you get X squared plus two X plus 6x plus 12 equals 5. Subtract 5. Now we can factor it. Any problem so far? Because they were they were added together, we can combine them by multiplication. So x, since the second sign is plus, they're both the same, they're both pluses. What times what is seven? When you add them, you get eight. Seven and one. Set them both equal to zero. If we check them, We get log base five of negative one, log base five of negative five, log base five of five, log base five of one. You can't take logs of negative numbers, so we can't use negative seven.
log base power of five is one, log base power of one is zero, so one equals one. So our only solution in our set is negative one. Because you cannot take a negative of a log. I know there's a lot of rules that are being thrown at you really quick, but again, that's what it just takes practice and have that reference sheet of all the properties next to you so you can see that. Example three. Ln x equals ln x plus six minus ln x minus four. Solve for x. The first thing we can do here is on the right hand side. It's subtraction. So we can make it into a division problem. Both sides are ln, so the only way that can be true is if this is true. Now it's just algebra. Multiply x minus 4 to both sides. We have x squared minus 4x equals x plus 6. Move those over. x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now we can factor. Second signs are minus, that means they're opposite signs. The bigger number gets the minus. What times what is six? When you subtract them, you get five, six, and one. Set them both equal to zero. Now you got to check your answers. That's the part students forget. So we can look at this right now and tell me what, which one's right, which one's wrong. Can we use negative one? No, because we can't do that. So we can't use negative one. So this is ln 12 over two. And it checks. So x equals six is the only solution. Make sense? Solve for X. Method one, method two, and both of them following the rules.
How many of y'all just took that over there? How many of y'all did that? So x squared equals 81 square root x equals plus or minus 9. And you have to check your answers. You see that it can't be negative, so it has to be positive. That's one way of doing it. Let's look at another way of using the properties. This other way will save you a lot of time. Because if you leave it at x squared, that means you'll have two answers. Get rid of the exponents, like one of the first rules we have. Now divide both sides by two. Log base three of x equals two. Now we do the x equals nine. All that work, the checking work is done. Both ways are correct. But if you leave it this way, you have, you'll end up with two solutions. You have to check them both. If you do it this way, you made it to a linear equation. You only have one solution. And you know it's going to work because it's plugged in there. Well, before you do anything, you have to make sure you have the same bases. Do we have the same bases? No. What is nine made up of? Three times three. So nine is three squared. Which is three to the power two X. What can you do now? You're right. We can move the six over if you want. I mean, this is quadratic in form, kind of. Well, could you division of what? These? I don't think so. Would it be the... No, it's minus. Is it? Yes, it is a constant. So we can uh, we can do log a m over n where n is three to x. Ah, but at, we, that means we have to take a log of each of these first. What we could do is we, we could do is log base three across the board. That means this one becomes a two X that disappears. This one becomes an X and that disappears. Two X minus X is X equals log base three of six. So that means X is what?
So basically, whenever you have an exponent as an x, we got to take a log of that base to get rid of it. All right, let's look at example four. Two X equals five and B is eight times three X equals five. We have an X as the exponent, so we have to get rid of it from up there. So we can take the LN of both sides. Or actually, no, we have to make it log base two of both sides. Because we have to get rid of that two. So the X comes over here. Actually, we could have done LN. So the X goes in front. Log base two of two is one. We need to change your base, which is ln five over ln two. There's your answer. We would have gotten the same thing if we're taking the ln first. If we were taking ln of both of these, that would have come out in front and divide by ln2. Same thing. So again, if you follow the rules, you can't go wrong. The rules are just which order you put them. What do you do with the second one? What do you got to do first here? Get rid of that. Take the LN of both sides. coefficient and then divide by ln3. You could leave your answer like this or you could expand it on top. Whatever, however you want to, it doesn't matter. And the more you do these, you start seeing the patterns real quick. Any questions so far? What if we have different bases? What do we do there? You do what we've been doing.
if you have different bases on your equation, you'll end up with a, a bigger equation. So what do I do first? To get the exponents out of the top. Take the ln of both sides. Because remember, as long as if the ln is the same, that means this has to equal this, which is what we're saying here. What does that do? What, what good is taking the ln of both sides? Our exponents, our variables that we're looking for are no longer on top. We have to isolate the x. So we have to get rid of the parentheses first. Distribute both of those. x ln 5 minus 2 ln 5. 3x ln 3 plus 2 ln 3. We have x's on both sides. So what do we do? Get all the x's to one side, non x's to the other. So let's move this one over there and get rid of this one. It's a constant. So we have x ln 5 minus 3x ln 3 equals 2 ln3 plus 2 ln5. So we got all the x's to one side, non-x's to the other side. How do we get the x alone? They both have an x, so we factor out the x. And then divide both sides. There's your answer. Can we simplify that any further? On top, they both have a two in common. And on the bottom, so since they're plus, that means they multiply to each other. Since these are minus, and you can write it that way.
on the bottom, the three becomes the exponent. Three cubed is 27. Since there's a minus, it becomes a division. On the top, I took out the two, so it's plus, so I can multiply the numbers, three times five. And this is not the only way you can write it, but you express it a couple of different ways if you want. We one similar to this. That's we could have solved it another way. But notice this one is quadratic in form. Because four is two squared. So this is 2x squared. Remember, quadratic in form is like this. If the exponents are doubled, So how do we solve this? Is set equal to zero already? We can use substitution here. We can set u equals 2x. Is that easier to look at? u and u, the second sign, so it's one's plus, one's minus, the bigger number is that. What times what is 12? When you subtract them, you get one. Right, four and three. So this one's four, this one's three. Take both of these, set them equal to zero. Remember, u is equal to 2x. So 2x equals negative 3. 2x equals 4. So how do we get, how do we solve for X? So that becomes X on two, but we can't do that. We can't take the ln of a negative number. So we gotta work on this side. X equals two. 
the logs are the same. What do y'all think? Doable or just needs practice? Or not doable? It's, it's that's why I like this 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 set subject, this topic, because it's like a puzzle. You you have so many pieces you can use and you can put them in any order you want to, in any arrangement you want to, it's still gonna come out of the same picture. If I, if you do it correctly, the only thing about this now the last one is you can use calculators, you use a calculator to find solutions, or you can use like Desmos, type in the two equations, and where they intersect, that's your solution. Why? Right. So again, it's it all depends on which one you use because. The reason I don't do this is because everybody has different calculators. Either people use their uh, cell phones and you could download whatever you, the function uh, calculator you want, or you have a TI, or you have a Casio, or you have your computer. So there's too many different formats. It's just that this is a TI-84 plus C, which use a lot of those are only made for schools. Like the Inspiron, you can't buy it because it's only made for schools. So that's what the last part is. That's why I don't worry too much about it. All right, that's it. And I 